friends, it's Miss Dana here today for Stories in Steam uh, to talk to you guys about adaptation. So you may recognize the background from some of my other videos. Today I am here again at Herbs Alive um, because this week we have been talking all about adaptations. And so adaptations are something that helps an animal to survive in its habitat and it's a way that they can do better. Um, so they adapt to like their surroundings and things like that. So uh, we are going to read this book, What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? that talks all about different animal body parts, um, ears, tails, eyes, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Um, and I have some guests with us today who are going to make some appearances. Um, as we go through our story and we'll talk about them a little bit too. So I hope you guys are excited to see them. Before we get started with um, our book, I thought it would be fun to play a little game. So we are going to play a game called Whose Tail Is That? And so I have six animals and we are going to start with a zoomed in image of their tail and then we'll zoom it out and I want you guys to try to guess what animals they are as we go through, okay? All right. Dude. I hope that you guys had fun with Whose Tail Is That and enjoyed seeing some of those cool animals. I have other animals now for our story. So we're going to get started with What Do You Do With a Tail Like This by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. All right. What do you do with a tail like this? So we are going to start and it says, animals use their noses their ears, their tails, their eyes, their mouths, and their feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it's used. So we have, what do you do with a nose like this? And we see five different noses on our page. Who can tell me what one of these animals is. Do you guys know? All right, so we've, we've got an elephant, a platypus, an alligator. Let's see. If you're a platypus, so that's this guy over here, you use your nose to dig in the mud. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground, all these little they help them. They're like sensors. If you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. And if you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. What do you do with ears like these? So we've got lots of eared rabbits. If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep cool. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. You guys remember we talked about bats a few times and if you have your packet, we talked about bats. They use sonar or echolocation. If you are a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. Could you imagine if we had ears on our knees? That would look so silly. If you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. So there's a lot of cool ears. This is, we're gonna get our first animal to look at. So this is a cool thing. You guys will notice maybe with all of our reptiles, you guys see, this is Digger. 
And Digger is a blue tongue skink. And you guys see Digger's ears? Digger, where are your ears? If we turn Digger to his side, do you guys see that little slot right there? That is Digger's ear. All right. Look, Gobbles, our bearded dragon, also has ears like that. So when these guys, when you look at them head on, when you look at them head on, you don't even see those ears. You see how you can see my ears kind of stick out. His ears are holes in his head so that he doesn't get them stuck on anything as they're traveling. So this is how pretty much all lizards um, and ears are inside so that they don't get stuck on things, right? So they don't get ripped off. You can't see them. They're there so they can, they can hear. So that was Gobbles and Digger and we know all about their ears now. So let's see what is our next body part. What do you do with a tail like this? So we have some pretty cool animals here. If you're a giraffe, you can brush off pesky flies with your tail. If you're a skunk, you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on its way. Have you guys ever smelled a skunk? If you're a lizard, you might break off your tail to get away. So not all lizards can break off their tail and get away, but some of them can. If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. And if you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. So I don't have a monkey because this is a reptile rescue. And monkeys are not a reptile, right? But what I do have is this guy who is a monkey tail skink. You guys see her right here? And so what she does is just, you guys can see her, as she hangs on me. Do you guys see that? Just like a monkey. That's where she gets her name, monkey tail skink. She'll hang on to my arm with that tail, just like I'm a tree branch. And she'll do that, and then she can grab fruits off of the tree if she wants to eat them. So that's what she does. She's a pretty squirmy one, but I hope that you guys thought she was cool. All right, so we've gone over our nose and ears and tails so let's see what might be next what do you do with eyes like these if you are an eagle you spot tiny animals from high in the air if you're a chameleon you look two ways at once if you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below water at the same time. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. And if you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. So these are some cool pictures. I thought instead of just a picture, you guys might be interested in seeing an actual chameleon actual eyes. Do you guys see those eyes? Here we go. So you can see her eyes. Yeah. You can see how she looks around. And she can move them all around and look. Her eyes don't, they can go different ways. So like if I try to move my eyes and look over there, like both of my eyes, did you see that? Both of my eyes go over there. Chameleons can move their eyes separately from each other. That was pretty cool. All right, we got a couple more. Remember, we had gobbles earlier, and gobbles sort of looked like this guy, but remember that they are different. So my gobbles here that I had, and we'll we'll see gobbles again in a little bit. 
Gobble does not, he doesn't squirt stuff out of his eyes, okay? All right, ready? What do you do with feet like these? If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. How many of you think it would be fun to eat with your feet? Maybe. How many of you think it would be super gross to eat with your feet? I don't know about you guys, but I think I prefer my fork and my knife. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. If you're a water strider, you walk on water. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. And if you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. All right, so there's actually a whole lot of animals that have sticky feet. So geckos are one of them. What I have is this guy. He is a tree frog and his feet sticky like suction cups so he'll stick even if I turn my arm like this look he can stick right there he's not sliding off his arms will stick to me you guys see that so that's pretty cool right all right I think we have one more thing right so We've gone over our nose, we've gone over ears, we've gone over tails, we've gone over eyes, we've gone over feet. So what is our last adaptation? What do you do with a mouth like this? Look at all these different mouths. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. If you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. And if you're an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. You guys may have noticed there was a snake on that page, but I didn't really talk about him. So these guys are cool. I want you guys to open your mouth as wide as you can. Go ahead. Tr wider doesn't get very wide. So snakes like this ball python, when they eat, they can move both jaws. Right? So us, we have what's called a fixed top jaw. It's attached to our skull, right? So it doesn't move when we move our mouths, only our bottom jaw moves. Right. See? If both of your jaws move, then you guys need to stop this video and go see a doctor. All right? So we are different. Snakes can open both their jaws so they can move both unhinge them completely so that they can eat things like eggs or rats or mice that are bigger than their head um, we can't do that we like if we tried to eat something bigger than us we couldn't do it right like we have to eat our burgers in lots of bites we can't just shove it down our mouth in one bite that would be crazy but snakes can so i hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of our friends um, and our book. I'm going to put our ball python away. I don't know if you guys can hear. Gobbles very loud right now. He wants out. Alright. So you'll notice. Can you calm down? Do you guys think these guys look similar or different? They kind of have a similar body shape. They've got four legs and a tail. So these guys both live in Australia natively, but they live in very different parts of Australia, right? So 
these guys live kind of like where meadows and woods come together, the blue tongue skinks do. We don't really know why they have a blue tongue, but scientists think that it scares predators, but we don't really have evidence of that. But so that blue tongue is an adaptation, but we don't really know why. His ears. You'll notice he looks very different. He's a lot darker than our bearded dragon, who is typically more in the desert, which is full of what? So full of sand, we have these guys who can camouflage better. So camouflage is an adaptation. You'll notice if he stays still, he's got some little spikes. That's where the name bearded comes from. Can you show them your beard? So when they get scared or angry, they'll puff up and they'll look more spiky. And also this bottom here, his bottom jaw when he gets, when he gets like agitated, which means angry or when he wants to prove that he's in charge, he can actually darken that. It'll get dark like a beard so that you know to leave him alone. All right. So even though they live in the same place, they have different habitats, and so they've had to adapt to those habitats, right? So that they can survive better there. And so that's why animals look different from one another. All right, so I hope that you guys enjoyed all of our animals here today. And um, what do you do with a tail like this? And hopefully, we will see you guys soon. Remember that um, you can still pick up packets and we also have activity kits that you can call up inside um, and our holds limit. You can pick up 15 items now, which is pretty awesome. That used to be six. So we, got, we adapted to you guys' needs and are letting you guys take out more things, right? So hopefully, We'll be able to see you guys soon, um, and I'll, you guys will hear from me next week when we do our next video for Stories in Steam. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Remember to keep following us on our YouTube and Facebook channels so you don't miss any of our story time fun and you don't miss any announcements. All right, bye guys. Thank you.